Let's take a look now at the art of the closing statement. We'll put some of our key points up on the chalkboard. Be sure to watch out for these during the course of the video. First, find clever ways to humanize your client. We will take a look at a good example of this. Second, recap the key facts of the case for the jury. After a long trial, the jury needs a refresher. Third, vary your speed and tone for emphasis. Fourth, it's important to memorize your opening and closing arguments. You're telling a story to the jury, and to sell that story, you need to own it. Reading from a script is simply not as effective. Fifth, use analogy to explain the heavy burden of reasonable doubt. We'll watch a good example of this. Sixth, communicate your theory of the case. Your theory is an account of the facts and controlling law that leads to a favorable outcome. Seventh, and finally, don't forget to restate your conclusion. May it please the court, counsel, members of the jury. It's terribly difficult to go through life without making any mistakes. I've made mistakes. I'm sure many of you have made mistakes. And if you haven't, you know someone who's made mistakes, maybe a family member, a friend. And if not, you know about celebrities, former presidents who've made mistakes. But the beautiful thing about humanity and the beautiful thing about this country and the beautiful thing about the great state of Florida is that we're not made to pay for these mistakes over and over again. And that's why we're here today. John Perez. John Perez committed some crimes when he was younger. He paid the price and he was later recruited by the Miami-Dade Police Department to involve himself in some drug stings, some operations, to bring down criminals who were doing some of the same things that he did in the past. They thought that he would be an ideal candidate. And in exchange for a place in the witness protection program, a new start at life, he agreed to help the Miami-Dade Police Department. And he did exactly what he was asked to do. Nothing more, nothing less. They asked Mr. Perez to transport drugs from Key West to Miami to make a trip in a plane. And now they've charged him with possession of the cocaine and they've charged him with the intent to distribute or traffic that cocaine. The same cocaine that he was asked to take from Key West to Miami. Well, the state has the burden to prove to you beyond and to the exclusion of all reasonable doubt that he was in unlawful possession of that cocaine and that he intended knowingly to traffic that cocaine. And you know the story. They alleged that he was flying the plane and he somehow opened a trap door or a normal door. And he dropped a kilo of cocaine from the plane that landed on the ground that he intended to distribute. And that is how the story goes. Well, in trials like this one, prosecution puts together stories, puzzles, kind of like a movie. And there's different scenes of this movie that they want you to put all together at the end of the case to come to some conclusion. But at the end of the day, if there are missing pieces of the puzzle or missing scenes from the movie or even missing links in the chain, then you must acquit. Now in this case, the prosecution has failed to prove to you beyond and to the exclusion of all reasonable doubt that Mr. Perez is guilty of the crimes for which he's been charged. Let's talk about this case. Started off with my co-counsel coming before you and giving an opening statement. And from the very start of this case, our story has been consistent. There's been no missing pieces, no missing links in the chain. And the state's counsel came before you and also told you a story. They told you that you would hear information about how Mr. Perez dropped a package of cocaine from the plane, how he opened the door to that plane, and how he intended to distribute that cocaine. But let's take a look at the real evidence that we have before us today. The only evidence that you're allowed to consider when you go back into that jury room. Who else did we hear from? We heard from an expert witness named Mikey Monday. Now, Mr. Monday is an expert in the logistics of airplanes. And he told you that the air pressure in the plane would not have allowed 
Mr. Perez to open up the door of the plane while the plane was in flight. And what is the only conclusion that you can make from the testimony of this expert witness? The only conclusion that you can make beyond a reasonable doubt is that the plane of that door was not open. But you are the wise judges of this court today, not me. You sat here during the trial. You listened to the testimony of all the witnesses. You saw the evidence and the documents. And now you have to go back and make a decision. Well, I submit to you today that the information that you have does not prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Mr. Perez is guilty of the crimes for which he's been charged. If anything, they prove that he is not guilty. But in this state, the burden of proof does not lie with Mr. Perez. And the judge is going to instruct you that when you go back into that jury room, there is only one side that you have to place a burden on today, and that's the prosecution. And if the prosecution fails to prove to you beyond a reasonable doubt any element of the crime, then you must acquit Mr. Perez. Now, the reason why your job is important today is because a man's liberty interest is at stake. And you can't allow feelings, emotions, the things that you think about on an everyday basis to cause you to make your decision. It's easy to make that logical conclusion. The bad man theory. Somebody did something in the past, then it's more likely that they would have done it again. But that's not the law in this state. And that's not the burden that you were to apply in this case. This is a very serious burden. You have to look at this charge individually and decide if on that day, Mr. Perez committed the crime for which he's been charged. And as I've said before, there's no information that can lead you to this conclusion. So members of the jury, take your job seriously. Go back into that room, communicate with one another. Think about the credibility of the witnesses that came before you. Think about the witnesses who had something to gain and think about the ones who had something to lose. Think about the plausibility of the statements that they've made. Think about the alternative theories. But I'm confident that at the end of the day, there's only one conclusion that you can make. And that is Mr. Perez is not guilty of possession of cocaine with the intent to traffic that cocaine. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience. Great, now let's quickly recap our chalkboard tips. First, find clever ways to humanize your client Second, recap the key facts of the case for the jury. Third, vary your tone and speed for emphasis. Fourth, memorize your opening and closing arguments. Fifth, use analogy to explain the heavy burden of reasonable doubt. Sixth, communicate your theory of the case. And seventh, restate your conclusion. Remember, you'll want to watch this video a few times. Keep track of the chalkboard tips and begin to incorporate them into your own presentation.